all roads including your conference. Good evening and welcome City Council meeting of uh, July the 10th. I call this meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll call, please? Councilman Shiland. Here. Mr. Moore. Present. Ms. Reclue. Present. Mr. Shiverdecker. Here. Mr. Simmons. Here. Mr. Stone. Present. Mr. Vaughn. Here. And Mr. Braun. Seven council members present and one absent. Very good. Thank you. If you'd rise with me. Uh, Pastor Bruce Williamson is with us this evening. He'll lead us in the invocation and if you will start us on the pledge. I will do that, sir. Heavenly Father, we rejoice and give you thanks for this blessed day, for the rains that this community, or at least some of it, received yesterday. I'm truly grateful for that and for your watch care over us as your people. I want to pray, Lord, tonight for a miracle in Thailand. Uh, these 12 soccer players and their coach were rescued by some of the best and bravest Navy SEALs. And Lord, the world has witnessed a miracle, and I want to acknowledge the Heavenly Father for seeing to the safety of these young people and all who came to their aid. Also in North Dakota, they were ravaged by tornadoes yesterday and are in recovery mode. So we pray, Lord, for recovery workers in the western part of the state of North Dakota. Locally, Lord, I pray for Officer Barker It'll be a long recovery for him, and I pray for his family, for Fulton Police Department, and the community that he faithfully served for years. We remember him and will perpetually and continually pray for his rehabilitation. I want to lift up this session tonight and those that have came from the community to share, those already here for work session as well. I pray, Lord, for our administrators, department heads, and all the boots on the ground that keep this safe keep this community both safe and prospering day by day. In addition to Officer Barker, I continue to pray for Chief Myers, Mayor Benton, Mr. and Mrs. Reclue, Mr. Chilin, Mr. Moore, the Polston family, and all others who need your perpetual encouragement, comfort, and strength each day. We're grateful for your love. We pray your blessings on this session. Any discussions that are held and any decisions that follow, that they'll be pleasing to you. We're grateful for your love and grace and blessings each day. We pray together and agree upon it. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Face the flag, please. Attention, salute, and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Pastor, I, I want to say that uh, we continue to have you and your family in our prayers and thoughts uh, for the loss of your mom. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Thank all of you. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, at the beginning of each council meeting, we set a time aside for visitors of the community or citizens that would like to share a uh, situation with the, uh, whether it's good or bad, with the uh, council. And uh, all that we do is ask that you limit your comments to five minutes and, and come to the microphone and give us your name and address. Uh, and of course, the, the clerk will time that. So at this time, I invite anyone that here that's not on the agenda to please come and would like to address the council to please come forward. I was yielding to the other members and they said, come on. <laughs> anyway, I want to go back to this electrical smart grid, which I've never gotten an answer to. I went back over our um, minutes of our meeting and it said October of 2017, I requested a year to date the cost of that smart grid. I realize the park went for 5,000 meters. I know that they had to be installed. It's a computer system, so that's going to be an ongoing. What I want to know is of this over a million dollars, <coughs> have we used it all? Do we need more? What's the deal? I want to know about the million dollars. Where are we at with that? And I was thinking at the same time you requested, Mr. Mayor, that at the December, at the end of December 2017, that information would be available, and it never happened. 
That has been given to me, Mrs. Gray, and I failed to forward it to you. I will do that this next week. And All right, thank you, sir. You please uh, go over. If you have any questions, please get us back to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Very good. Is anyone else would like to address the council? Good evening. Good I'm evening. Donna Barger, and I'm the city clerk with the city of Brookfield. I'm here this evening to present Courtney Croson with her certificate, Missouri Rules, Missouri Certificate, and um, I have a few things to say. So, um, My purpose in being here tonight is to recognize your city clerk for having been awarded the designation of Missouri Registered City Clerk. This certification is a combination of education and experience, and Courtney is to be commended for her dedication in achieving this goal. The Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association has a membership of 516 clerks and is dedicated to the education of city clerks and finance officers throughout the state of Missouri. Additionally, you as the elected officials are to be commended for your continued support of Courtney as she has worked towards this certification. It clearly demonstrates that you recognize that the knowledge she receives at the educational sessions are of great benefit to you, to the staff, and to the citizens of Fulton. I, on behalf of the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Association of Missouri and the Central Division, want to congratulate and give best wishes to Courtney as she continues her commitment to lifelong learning in her career and services to the City of Fulton. And I have a certificate as well as a um, proclamation in your honor. Marceline, when you drive through. <laughs> oh, that's right. She's up from around there. Huh? Brookfield, too, she said. In Boonville. Boonville. Brookfield, up by Marceline. Brookfield, too. Mm -hmm. Very good. We'll now move on to the, uh, uh, the consent agenda. This is an agenda that we use to approve routine items. Of, however, if a council member uh, wishes to pull one of the items off the agenda, uh, please. You're welcome to do that. We will consider it individually. Uh, there are two items on the consent agenda tonight, and uh, they are appointments and reappointments. The, the first is appointment of Les Hudson to the Planning and Zoning Commission, mm -hmm. and the second is a reappointment of Charlie James to the Public Utility Board. There's no opposition to the consent agenda. I move we accept the mayor's two appointments. Second. second. Very good. Thank yeah. you. Very good. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Very good. The consent agenda is approved. We'll now move on to unfinished business. Uh, we have an update, looks like, on the uh, business 54 and 4th Street improvement. Both those projects are. Moving forward. Hope you're not going to go through all that material. One by one. <laughs> 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 one by one. Chapter and <laughs> uh, Business 54, we just had a uh, pre construction meeting with the contractor. The general contractor is Aplex out of Lynn, Missouri. And um, we dang near filled this place up. We had so many people in there, city folks and uh, obviously contractors, MoDOT, um, and so forth. So uh, meeting went well, went over, um, um, you know, the highlights of the project. Um, the contractor kind of presented how he thought the project would go, how he anticipates it going. Um, he will begin 
uh, down here by the roundabout as well as by Bartley School. There's some elements uh, to Bartley School entrances uh, that need to be, be performed uh, before school starts. So uh, he's planning on getting that done. Um, and then, um, like I said, he's going to start at the roundabout and uh, gonna concentrate on the east side of the road and go from the roundabout to 4th Street uh, to do entrances and curb and gutter. Um, and then from 4th Street, uh, the project skips to 6th Street and progresses northward. So it'll continue on the east side at 6th Street and uh, progress all the way to north, all the way north to uh, 13th, which is just <laughs> north, just north of uh, Avabel Press, uh, but on the other side of the road. And then, uh, and then from there, progress back the other way. So his biggest element in the project is trying to get the curb and guttering done. So. Uh, he can then proceed to uh, asphalt and he could come back later and do any uh, sort of sidewalk work that, that he needs to get done. So uh, he's got till December 1st to uh, get the project done. So uh, he'll be hustling. Uh, any, any questions on the Business 54 job? So is, this part, is part of this the pole removals and all the underground electrical and... Well, uh, as we discussed in the meeting with him, um, the poles, uh, he'll have to work around the existing poles that are there. Uh, those poles, that our, our utility project will not be complete to the point uh, of removing um, those poles. Daryl could probably elaborate if need be, but, uh, but he'll be able to do the curb and guttering. It, 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 we're not widening the street any, so mm -hmm. uh, we'll just have to come back and or remove or or clip off those poles uh, at their base after it's over so um, okay so this is pretty much just curb and gutters and the well I assume we're gonna overlay yeah curb to fix all the trenching that we've done right right curb curb and guttering uh, and sidewalks mill and overlay sidewalks on our on our side of it will only be handicap ramp improvements at uh, intersections um, and anything with anything right at entrances uh, with the sidewalk but uh, the straight sections of sidewalk uh, um, we're not doing we didn't have enough money to uh, do the straight sections of sidewalk so we'll have to eventually if if the council wishes come back and redo the straight sections and, and I anticipate that we will do some of that because you know with the utility uh, improvements that we are doing a lot of that sidewalk is affected um, so, so they'll stay rocked essentially for a while uh, right okay. right right well, they'll, be, that, they'll be taken back to sidewalk they'll be taken back to sidewalk but the contractor is not going to focus on the straight sections of sidewalks we'll, we'll so. fix the utility cuts that we've done right, right. we will okay. we'll, we'll fix what we've torn up um, but we don't want to get in the contractor's way, so we'll have to so, we'll have to coordinate with them. Yeah. So December first is not business fifty four finished; it's a part of it. This right. Is this is the huh. uh, December first would be the just purely the street elements is what I would say. Okay. Um, yeah. So the sidewalks in front of the the cemetery where it's all wrapped. That's a different project. Oh, on, oh, I thought we were on 4th Street. I'm well, I just I started with Business 54, and then oh, I was going to oh, go sorry, to 4th Street. I'm sorry, I'm still Street. on 4th Street. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I was, okay. was going to do one and then the other. But, uh, <laughs> now, the nice state. Yeah. Right. Okay. No. Yeah, he did yeah. it. <laughs> but we're going to patch back where yeah. the gravel is on the side. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. Kyle, what's our communication plan to the citizens? Our communication plan to the citizens? We need, we need to be utilizing her well, as much as possible. I have one other suggestion that I was going to bring up that I've had two or three constituents say they weren't aware of what was going on. They said, why don't we, you know, the banners we put across the street, that they pay attention to. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't read their whatever and they don't get online. Could we put a couple banners up that are saying, you know, this is what your tax dollars are doing, be patient, uh, it's going to be something like that across there? I read all that, you know what I mean? Oh, they know that you're going to have the uh, this going on and that going on. But something like that helps as far as communicating with them. Right. You mean like we you will see have on the highways? Uh, well, like we see down Where it down. says state improvements no, funded? No, the banners or? we put up where it okay. says, you know, you're going to have the VFWs has their thing or whatever. Would something like that help to inform people what's really going on? Because there's a lot 
people that don't know yet, they'll say, why is it all messed up? You know, mm -hmm. not unless you can put them up a lot more often. What, I, well, what I would say, well, just a couple. what I would say, and, and, I, and I definitely want to communicate to Jenny is that uh, definitely. we will have a, the project will have a weekly meeting. And right now that's scheduled for uh, Monday mornings at, at eight o'clock at City Hall. And so, um, you know, it'll, <laughs> right now it's at City Hall. It may adjust to Napa eventually. The contractor's staging his material and, and his operation at, up at, up, up at the Napa store, so. Uh, we just need to over communicate. Mm -hmm. there Every are step of the way, that aren't over communicate what we're doing. You know, I don't know if it's putting signs up here on our windows that show, okay, from, <laughs> July 1 to July 15th, these streets and sidewalks will be under construction. July 15th to August 1, these streets and sidewalks will be under construction with a map and, you know, and on time, on time, finished, progressing, delayed. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever it might that, be. Though. And then well, the, you know, the, the newsletter that we send out, a lot of people don't you know, it. Whether they read it or not, we need to have it in there. We need to have a map in there every month. This is where we're at. This is what we're going to be doing. I don't know exactly what we need to do, but everybody in this town should know at a general level where we're at every month. And that's our responsibility. No, no one thing is going to fix that. Right. I mean, oh, no, so no, anything you can think of. The That's newspaper, newsletters, right, right. post Richard? things, banners, on, on exactly. signs, on whatever, all of that That's stuff. That's why I listed all of it. It's so every bit of it. The more, the more we communi communicate, I got a feeling the less feed, the we're less yeah. hate we're going to get back. Right, right, right. But no, I, I agree, and that's an element that, that mm -hmm. uh, I need to improve on. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Would Jenny take that up as a every two week progress report? You can come over and talk to the engineer every couple of weeks uh, about what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to get the word out. Mm -hmm. So if he emailed you the schedule, though? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right. And the contractor will give us a schedule, right. a weekly mm -hmm. schedule, so. so. Right. Mm -hmm. MoDOT does that. Yeah. They list the streets and things. That, like, Very good. Let's, yeah, I noticed we'll, that you do that. Okay. We'll have uh, Kyle continue like to work it. on communications for sure. And uh, now that we know you want that. And 4th Street, you want to hit that real quick? <laughs> yeah, 4th Street, uh, we received bids. Uh, this week and and uh, we um, very happy to say that uh, we are within budget on on the bid. Rad Baker is the uh, uh, lowest uh, lowest bidder at the moment. So we're going we're going through our con our uh, uh, engineers going through the paperwork and making sure that uh, all the eyes are are dotted and the T's crossed and everything. But uh, he's the apparent low on the project and. And uh, I think well, everything he's is looking very good. Very yeah. He's the same contractor that did the remodel on the police station. We had four. Oh, we had four bid on the project, and uh, Rad gave us a, a great bid on it. So the other the other three, I would say, were extremely high, uh, in my opinion. So, and uh, according to the uh, to our engineers, uh, our consultant engineers' estimate too. So. Uh, Rad was uh, way more in line with the Good. with the estimate. Yeah. So, Good. when they going to start? I breathe the sigh of relief. When they going to start on Fourth Street? Uh, Fourth Street yet to be yet to be determined, uh, but he's got uh, 120 calendar days to get the job done. So uh, once the once all the paperwork and bonding and all that stuff is in, uh, there'll be a notice to proceed, and and then that 120 days will start from there. Correct. Who'd you say he's done? Rad Baker. He does asphalt? He does now. He's got a subcontract. <laughs> he's got a subcontract. He's got a subcontract. Yeah. Okay, he does. Yeah. Capital, capital out of Jeff City okay. is going to actually okay. do the asphalt. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's fine. I just right. misunderstood you. Yeah, so we're thinking about maybe even December 1st also? 
uh, that, be done? <laughs> that would that would be in line. That would that would be in line with the with the calendar days. Yeah. So um, that being said, you know, be be prepared. It's going to get worse before it gets better. So if that's if that's possible. So I know. Thank you. Uh, very good. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. We'll move on to uh, new business, and uh, we have a request to uh, close Court Street on September the one. Uh, is Bryant with us this evening? Would you like to come forward and tell us what's going on and highlight what you're requesting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> First off, good evening and thank you all very much for allowing us to come. I'm Taylor Bryant and I'm originally from Avaz, Missouri, and we're here to request shutting down a section of Court Street um, during my wedding on September the 1st. Um, we will be rinsing out the playhouse for that event, and so we were just wanting to kind of use that as overflow for an opportunity for kids to, and adults to come out and play some like outdoor games and things of that nature. And then I do know that you all have a closed container law, and so I would assume that there would be people um, just like with any restaurant that would probably walk out on the street. So we just want to make sure we have all of our bases covered and ask any questions mm -hmm. that um, we might have from you all and also answer any questions that you all have of us. Okay. Have you spoken with the any chief? Questions? That's a great question. That would be her. No, I haven't talked to the chief of police yet. So we haven't talked, spoke with him? Yeah. This is not something we commonly do, correct? For private <coughs> events? This would be a first. Both, both for the walk around alcohol mm -hmm. and the closing of Court Street. I, I'm not trying to influence you one way or the other with the mm -hmm. Brick District Playhouse, where it is and what it is. Mm -hmm. I would almost get, bet that this request is going to be made again in the future. Mm -hmm. I would also agree with that. As mm -hmm. I say, I think we're probably going to be probably one of the first events that they've rented out for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since it's I believe. Long, I believe you are. Kind of so, what about cleanup? Yeah. So that would be on us. That's part of our. Uh, <laughs> that's part of our contract with them is that we are required to clean up the building with them on Sunday are. morning, and so I would assume that we would clean up all the stuff on Court Street Saturday evening before we leave. I believe the chief has a remark. Yeah. Could we yeah. speak with the chief? That'd be nice. Do you have questions? <laughs> well, have you, you have are you familiar? I, um, we've never done that before, so uh, this would set a, a precedence for all the city, I think. Uh, it's certainly up to you all, whatever you want to do. Um, then we, we could have individuals throughout the city wanting to close the street in front of their house at any given time right. uh, mm -hmm. for, for whatever. Mm -hmm. And again, I, you know, I we'll deal with whatever you all decide, but <clears throat> you're certainly going to be uh, probably opening up a, yeah. a new situation in an alcohol in, in the streets uh, by individuals rather than like our street fair or uh, I know we, we closed the chair of the uh, street for several churches, mm -hmm. which is um, something we've did for years. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, it, we don't uh, okay. typically close it for an individual or uh, okay. civilians like that. But it's up to you all, whatever you want to do. Uh, so, uh, question for you. What is like the restaurants in town? I know that they sit on the street to drink. Well, they the <coughs> is that something different? They have, a, they have a license that they can.
So I think the council don't have any other questions. I well, have one. Sure, go ahead. Are you going to go straight across from the end of the playhouse over by the church and then at the corner of Shively or up to the parking lot of Exchange Bank? By your. Is this with these little hash marks? I was going to say, kind of the way the map was drawn is the way I was doing it. I was kind of allowing for the pharmacy to still have their drive through to be able to get prescribed. But Back I think they'll be closed anyway. I'll look at them. They'll be closed yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of those businesses right there will be open during the wedding. Four Plus, that's in the afternoon on Saturday. So mm -hmm. Nobody goes down to the court on Saturday. Saturday. It's kind of mm -hmm. Right. Well, I understand what you want to do, but I was going to suggest that maybe <laughs> if they could, if you could, if you was going that far, if you kept the alcohol on the sidewalk and put the games and stuff in the street section. Mm -hmm. As I said, we don't even know if anybody's going to walk outside the building with alcohol. I mean, that's not our intention. We don't have a big drinking family anyway. <laughs> but we just know that we're going to be serving liquor inside the building. And if we have games outside, it's going to be likely that somebody's going to walk outside with a beer in their hand. You know, and we, we're just concerned about that. Well, so. that is the idea. I suggest that the that chief out, check the bistro's yeah. liquor license and see if, if they're allowed to serve on the sidewalk. So like I can, I can answer serve. that for you, and the answer is no. Yeah. Um, they're not allowed to serve on the sidewalk. And that's something that I think Bill and I have kind of looked at in the past. We have some restaurants that do that. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what I'm That are at. not by law technically allowed to do that. So um, what they're asking for, just an exception to the open container laws, exactly what they would need for this event. And I, I understand, you know, saying, well, let's try to keep it on the sidewalks, but I think it's going to be more of a hassle probably to, to say you can only have your beer right here on the sidewalk yeah. versus an area they already have blocked off. So an open <coughs> container exception would probably be the most appropriate if that's what you guys decide to do. But haven't we in the past when they used to have the fairs, they served alcohol in the big parking lot. They just roped it off and did that on Nickel Street. Yeah, but that was more of a public event. D yeah, I guess it, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that, but I mean, we have allowed alcohol on the street. The street fair. Oh, yes. definitely, yeah. It's roped yeah. off. But this is this is different, I understand. It's yeah. public or uh, private. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's private, but it is a licensed business. I I know they have, they have the license. Uh, I have to go in with Mr. Johnson. You, you know, we designed something that has no room in it to really do events like that. Unless they rent the whole building, so. Well, but that doesn't mean we need to close down Court Street every time somebody holds an event there either. Here's where our community. Well, center. you can only do it so many <coughs> months out of a year, but well, there are some citizens who would tell you we don't need to close Court Street down for the Brick District too. Who you know complains about it? But. Right. The other facet to this that I think is important is state law and city law states that you cannot have an open container or sell liquor within 100 feet of a church. Now, the city council voted to allow the Brick District Playhouse to have a liquor license in that location. They had the support in of the, the churches. Middle. But I would think it would probably be a good idea to just make them aware if this does get passed or get a letter of support from them the so church. that way everybody's in the clear. That's true. Um, you got the bit, you know, because it's right going to be right outside the Christian church's door. So okay. that might be a good idea. The senior, you know, if you recall, uh, the street fair, <clears throat> they wanted to move the second beer garden up in that area. Right. And no. I, I advised them that that would not be a good idea to go to the church. <clears throat> right. Uh, they just don't need to. Their gardens anyway. Uh, and that's a little different situation. Yeah, I would yeah. say, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to serve beer. I just, I'm worried that somebody's going to walk outside the building with beer. Mm -hmm. and sure. I just don't want you know, to come to a wedding and then they get arrested and then... Exactly. Yeah, our daughter's known for having weddings and everybody gets arrested. Well, Which sure. I've been at weddings has happened after, but... <laughs> I see. Well, yeah. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Sure. 
Okay. The street fair that we've had, I seem to remember years ago, we had a lot of problems with open containers, um, but several iterations, we finally worked through it. And do you remember what our problems were? Or um, other than people? Yeah. No, I wasn't here then. Okay. But I can tell you, this, this event's not even going to be. Okay. Similar. No. We're, we're not going to have 100, 100 people wandering all over town. <laughs> 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 we're probably going to have one keg and probably a couple of cases of wine, and that's going to be it. So there's probably not really going to be much room for participation either. I understand, sure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't yeah. foresee it. That would be like comparing apples and elephants. One of the reasons we're also on the commission on Street is we're going to be using the playhouse kind of as a Daughter from Churchill over there. There you go. Yeah, you can nail it. Mayor. 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 Steve has a question down this way. Yes. I don't have a question. I wanted to see if y'all would agree with a motion I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem blocking the street for the car and all that, but the alcohol has to stay inside. I think it would just be less confusing for everybody involved in them even liability wise because you know i think missouri now you can still be sued personally as well as the business so <coughs> that would be my recommendation so your motion is to allow the street closure as requested but limit the alcohol to the premises the same. Right. of the playhouse mm -hmm. building second do i have a second to that motion yes we do councilman schubert okay very good thank you yeah. Okay, I have a motion and a second to allow the event. However, uh, all open containers need to stay inside the building. Uh, is there any further discussion of the motion or question? Who, who closes it? Is that the police? No? The street Sit, department. Street? Well, typically, the street department draws off the barricades and they would be responsible for setting them up. Put them up. And the barricades are actually sitting there. So, unless they move, <laughs> They're everywhere right now. <laughs> Just anyway. Friday evening and pick them mm -hmm. up Friday night. Mm, okay. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 Could I have a show, show of hands on that? <clears throat> on the yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We have to see. Uh, so those opposed. all those opposed no okay no okay i have one no uh so that passes so we'll we'll apply it with, with, with that with that ca caveat okay oh, well. thank you thank you all mm -hmm. thank you I, I and congratulations yes <laughs> hope you have a good event okay. station five police and that outside the door okay <laughs> our next item is uh for uh, about council concerns that are not already on the agenda uh, at this time is now to bring it forward. Oh, your turn. Uh, who has any council concerns? I'll look this way. Mr. Shot. Oh. The uh, traffic light at uh, St. Louis and uh, Business 54, is that our responsibility or is that somebody else's? That is ours. It's ours. Okay. Well, something's happened to it because the time delay on it is, I sit there Sunday morning for, I timed it, a minute and a half. Yeah. And the light never changed. So I, I don't know if there's. Which way were you going? When yeah, where I was, was coming down St. Louis. Yeah. I talked, I mentioned that to Kyle <coughs> for all that, the end of that last week, and I imagine he hadn't had a chance to follow through. So on you that noticed stuff. it too? Yeah. Okay. Well, I've had others tell me. But I mean, I've sat there Sunday morning, nobody else is on the road with me, <laughs> and the light wouldn't change. Yeah. Just yeah. sit there it's always know. nice to have traffic lights like that. Yeah. That's right. Well, <laughs> since we're, anybody else? Yeah, no. since we're talking about traffic lights, <laughs> Business 54 and 10th Street, um, I don't know if all the remodeling we've done has gotten it kind of weird, but the left turn on Business 54 comes on almost all the time, whether there's cars there to turn left or not. Yeah. And I kind of thought they were off on a some sort of sensor or something. 
I would imagine yeah. all the work we've done in the street. I'm sure. Yeah, and that might that already be planned to be fixed. I don't know. I think uh, Kyle, Kyle and I discussed that too. Didn't you mention that that will be reworked mm -hmm. at the time of research? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's all going to be a mess. <laughs> okay. Anybody else on this side? Yes. Mary. Um, I live. You know where I live, and I go down Tennyson all the time. I've probably called three or four times. In front of the fire, the, from uh, Business 54 to Mocaine Road, where the fire station is, there's never been a, a night that I've been through there where all the lights are working. They'll be on. It was totally dark. There was one street light on all the way down the other night. I mean, it was, and it's dark out there. And I just want to mention it again. And I have called a couple times and, you know, down and spoke with the. I also the mentioned on our website, you can go on there and there's a place to hit and you can write out your your concern yeah. and, that, and they'll actually follow up. Somebody might not be one to read. Well, I, I know the light across my across from my house was that way and I found this thing on the website. Oh, they're good at it. Mm -hmm. Within a few days it was fixed. Yeah. 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 Okay. That works real well. I've yep. tried it myself. I've talked to him. I, I Mr. Mayor, Stone? There was various concerns and complaints about the the creeping of our fireworks ordinance. Oh. It, it, the complaints were that it feels like people are doing a lot more than what the ordinance may allow. They're going longer, they're going oh. later, they're going oh, yeah. bigger. Folks are abusing it. Yes. They're, okay. they're shooting off things that probably okay. aren't covered in the ordinance and they're shooting it past certain hours yeah. and days. Steve, yeah. would you like to address so, that fireworks ordinance? Mm -hmm. So just, just and our experience this last fourth. That we just we may want to communicate next year prior to it, you know, exactly what what's in the ordinance, what's allowed, and then how to to call a complaint. The ordinance for what now? Fireworks. Fireworks. The fireworks. The way oh, okay. It's a mess. Abuse was it abused quite a bit this year? Or what What's your opinion? It was abused early, sure. The uh, prior to. Uh, Third, oh, there was yeah. fireworks being shot. We responded yeah. uh, when we could identify who shot them and if they had any. We took them, mm -hmm. and um, we took some at the street fair even. So right, right. <clears throat> that they were shooting off. You um, see, yeah, there, there was a lot of fireworks shot. Yeah, um, recommendations. We had about uh, probably about 80, 75, 80 calls. Uh, yeah. Typically, prior to the uh, fireworks ordinance okay, yeah, that yeah. allowed them to shoot, we'd have between 200 and 300 calls. Yeah. So it certainly cut our call load down. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know it was pretty annoying for some people. After 11 o'clock, we did respond to those uh, that we could determine where they came from. Um, parents are not at all cooperative. Yeah. They allow them to shoot prior to two o'clock in the morning yep their kids will be out there shooting and they are supportive of them protective of them um we just have a lot of i won't say a lot we have uh quite a few irresponsible parents that encourage their kids to break the arguments mm -hmm. but we got what's your opinion what do you think do you think we should do think we need fireworks in this town <laughs> As a, as a chief, not a... I, I would like to see the ordinance changed, and, and I'm not sure that we could do this, uh, to where we could um, ticket the parents of 10-year-old kid. I mean, what are you going to do to a 10-year-old kid? Yeah. There's not a lot you can do to him. We can take, uh, write him up and send it to juvenile, and they aren't going to do anything. Um, we can't arrest them. Or the parent, right. Um, so I would like to see, and I, and I have researched this with other communities mm -hmm. that allow fireworks, I'd like to see that we could ticket the parents or the property owner. Okay, mm -hmm. good idea. Because there's property owners that allow the kids to shoot on their property as well. Sure, So um, that would probably have more of an impact than anything. If that's a, a direction the council would like to take, we can research that and come back with I'd like something. to. Anything that would make the chief's job a little easier? I would like it, yes. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good okay. thing to look into. Same, everybody agrees. No problem with that.
Okay. Thank you. We'll do that. Okay. Thank you. you want me to do that or are you all going to do it? What do you want to do, Madam Clerk? We'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> you and I will work on that. Both fingers. All right. Uh, and I think we ought to have the uh, <clears throat> Chief Cofield involved because uh, yes. actually uh, Chief Buffington wrote a lot of the present ordinance. So mm -hmm. okay. he did a lot of research on that as well. Good. Okay. Great. Super. Maybe we ought to just review the whole thing while you're at it. Uh, thanks. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. Thank you. Thanks, right. Steve. Thank you. Yep. Okay, very good. Anything else from down here? No. We'll move this side. <laughs> who's, who's got something? Richard? Yeah. Sure. No, always. <laughs> always. Always. Go for it. Uh, ballpark update. I'm it's going to be on the next, next agenda. Okay. They, they have a meeting scheduled for this coming Monday. And we'll have an update at the next city council agenda on meeting oh, good. on the progress of the architects. Architects. Good. Thank you. Uh, also, is there an update on the house on Sixth Street? Tom Riley is working with it. Um, has, it has it been to court yet? I mean, I thought he was taking not it to court. court. Not to court. Danny can tell. The owner has a lawyer, so it's in the lawyer's hands. Oh, That's about okay. the best way I could put it. Okay. That's fine, yeah. Okay. And I also got a, a street light deal for <laughs> Daryl, probably. But it's, on the, it's on the corner of uh, Marlbrook uh -huh. and Herring Bill. Drive. That street light's on all day long, all night. It's been on for about two weeks. <laughs> oh, that's and it buzzes real loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all I've got. We'll pass that on the website. That's all. Yeah. So, thank you. Exactly. There's a specific for, form for, for that. Right. Mr. Well, Mayor, that's... I'm going to give you a break tonight. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> I hope you're not only giving me a break, but everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Steve. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Very good. Unless. Someone needs a break. I'm just going to move on to resolutions. Let's do it. Okay. Do I hear? Okay. We'll move uh, resolutions. Uh, we'll consider resolution number 3312. This is a resolution that has to do with applying for a grant uh, for uh, uh, design and uh, anyway. I wrote something here. I can't, can't read my own, own writing. So. Okay, for, uh, plan specification and estimates for the downtown brick district area for work mm -hmm. down there. Uh, Councilman Stone, would you please present resolution 3312 for consideration? Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Present resolution number 3312, a resolution authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri, to sign all necessary documents in relation to the CFDA number 20.933 National Infrastructure Investments Grant for the development of engineering plans, specifications, and estimates for the downtown brick district area and contingent upon the receipt of these grant monies authorizing the city's in-kind and monetary match. I make a motion to adopt resolution 3312 at tonight's council meeting. Second. Very good, thank you. I have a motion and a second to adopt uh, resolution 3312 at tonight's meeting. Uh, any further discussion or questions on this motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Very good. The yeses have it. We'll now move on to resolution 3313, which has to do with uh, pole attachments <coughs> and a license agreement with. Uh, Extanet systems. Uh, Councilman Shevardecker, would you please present uh, resolution 3313? Yes, sir. Resolution 3313, a resolution authorizing the mayor <clears throat> on behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri, to sign all necessary documents in relation to the pole attachment license agreement with Extanet Systems Incorporated and establishing an effective date. I make a motion. We advance, so uh, we adopt resolution 3313 at tonight's meeting. Second. Very good. I have a motion and a second to adopt 3313 at tonight's meeting. Any questions or uh, yes. discussion? Sure. 
that are any of them going on uh, fancy poles that we've got around town? They are not. They are not proposed for that. But when we pass this, I guess they could. We, the the company has been very. Uh, maybe not the word very has been receptive to working with us to find to identify poles within an area uh, that would be suitable. And they they wouldn't go on a decorative pole. Well, my second question is, is we're we're going through and taking the poles down and putting the stuff underground. What happens then? Well, I guess two options would be um, it stays there. And the other option would be for us to find a satisfactory relocation of the of the equipment. Okay, thank you. So, so this <coughs> agreement's only for one pole, though, right? That's correct. It is. Okay. Okay. Very good. Right. Will we be required? It's kind of, uh -oh. it's kind of, it's kind no. of, our, it's kind of the standard. Well, though. It's a yeah. We're setting. It's, it's the we're standard. We're setting a standard. Go ahead, John. They're, they're only asking for one now. They're only asking for one now. Right. But they could come in and put 20. That's correct. And that's why when you read the contract, if they propose six poles, we've got so much time to look at them and right. agree. If it's one pole, it's something short. It. Uh, it does say in the contract that if we remove a pole for the benefit of the public, like 4th Street or 54, they got to get off. That they've got what? they got to get off. They got removed. Okay. And they pay. So we're not obligated. Did not read where they they pay for the. They pay for any make ready that we have right. to do okay. to get them ready, and then one thing that's been bothering Mr. Johnson for at least 12 years <laughs> is when we remove something or change a pole out, they don't. The existing companies have a hard time or don't transfer to the new pole. This contract has it in there. If they don't, in a certain amount of time, we move it if we want to, we charge them for it. Okay, and then I had one other question about the box being only like 10 foot off the ground. I yeah, guess, that's, that's that pretty low. Yeah. It is, except it's, that is the standard where they mount these things. Yeah. This, this thing's went through the state legislature, what, two years in a row, and in the last legislature, we got the uh, municipal electric got a basically a two year, two year reprieve on this. So Columbia, we copied Columbia's, basically, is what we did. There's a little bit of tweaking, but one of the things that the, uh, the companies was griping about was non-standardization in Missouri. Everybody had different documents. So Columbia's have to make a new one because this is a new thing, quote, because of the old pole attachments. They drill one hole and they take about a foot of post space where this is more vertical. Okay. So we did wait till Columbia got finished with theirs and the state legislature closed down for the year. I am okay. just concerned 10 foot <clears throat> looked like it would be susceptible to vandalism. If it was up a little yeah. higher. Yeah. Of course, it's their, it's their problem, stuff. Yes. Yeah. That's what I can tell you the way yeah. it's got right. down. It's the What's the, <laughs> if they wanted to do more, do each of those have to come back to us or this is, just this, this opening is, the contract for a year to however many you agree to <coughs> letting them do. This is this would be just like we the pole attachment agreement we have with charter or mm -hmm. socket right. or anybody else. This is this is how they have to do it. Okay. In their and their procedures. It, but, but in answer to your question, no, it would not come back to you. Okay. And it'll continue on until it would be yeah next right. year and whatever. I mean, nobody in town <coughs> in thirty or forty five days. Daryl's going to be standing at the podium again talking about a cell tower that we have negotiated a location for mm -hmm. in the process. We are going to have cell towers. This is, this is called a mini cell. Um, I'm much more open and receptive to the mini cell concept just because they're not quite as ugly mm -hmm. and they're, they're less obtrusive. You're not going to, they have them in Columbia right now and you don't even notice them I'm, unless you're looking. Yeah. Um, be this is going question. to be, because this is the G5 network, this is the faster network. It means that they are going to have more of these. I can guess across town in 10 years, there's 30 of them, okay? Um, 
The company, as we said, has been receptive to work with us to move it. I think they, they're able to move it about 250 to 300 feet. So we were able to find a pole within, within their circle. They've been receptive to going on that pole. Uh, and I think the thing that we need to, that I need to remind myself of once in a while is even though it, we're, we're working with the cell companies to get their equipment up, it just leads to a greater benefit for our citizens. Um, cell towers are a necessary evil. Everybody in the room probably has a cell phone <coughs> in their pocket. Without the cell phone towers, they're not going to work. Okay? Yeah, that's mine in the car. And, then, and this, this G5 is, is next generation. Well, if I'm not mistaken, the best I remember when I was in the business, they came out with a ruling that we couldn't dictate anything about cell towers. They put them where they wanted to. And then we were this close to the state saying, city folk, we're not, we don't care what you think. They can do anything they want. Yeah, that's right. So that's one reason we worked. We waited for the city of Columbia to get their, their pole attachment done. Yeah. The city of Fulton is jumping on almost at the exact word for word city of Columbia. I think we did a little bit of tweaking. Um, but there's been some talk that with the city of Columbia adopting this proposal, and if the city of Fulton adopts this proposal, it could actually become the statewide standard. Because it is, a, it is one of the few happy agreements on pole attachment agreements across the state. Rather than the, the forceful oh, easements yes. and things How that we have been <coughs> reading about over the last year of, you know, you will let us put it on Walmart, you will let us do right. this, you will let us do this. Well, actually, when when these guys came in, their original dot was just outside the front door of Walmart. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's where they want. That's where they wanted to be. And we said, no, that ain't gonna happen. Let's, we can find something in the area. We can find something in the neighborhood. And then that's when we found out they can they can go about 250 to 300 feet from their ideal location. Okay, thank you. That. That was what I was remembering was the, the, the forcefulness of we're going to put this in front of Walmart. And we're so I guess, this. you know, Walmart has a tower out there now. It's maybe 200 feet from that location, 200 yards. Uh, to answer a question Mr. Vaughn had earlier, there is some of these in historical downtowns where they put them on top the decorative poles, but it's a different unit. It's, if you've been to the light district in Kansas City, there's some in it. I think you, you had a picture of one, didn't you? Might have been. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So basically, so, they dictate what they want done. We got to do it. So each of these, but they pay for it. Yeah. Yeah, they're paying. Yeah. yeah. So each of these take a meter. Yes. And they're all fed back to the powerhouse. Yeah. Okay. What What we'll probably nice, do is put a meter on nice one installation, off of and, and, yeah. and then it, if they have 20 installations, we'll just take that one meter times 20. Oh, okay. Save our cost. Okay, I guess. Cool. Okay. Any other questions? It's pretty no. good shot in the hip. Okay, very good. Well, hearing no further discussion, uh, call for the question. All those in favor of resolution number 3313, uh, please shake by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Yes is have it. And, and just a little bit of a follow up. I told you about in 45 days or so, we're going to be talking about a cell tower. Yeah. Um, they wanted, they wanted to put it in Veterans Park, mm -hmm. and we said no. And then they wanted to put it at the corner in Veterans Park at the corner of. They wanted to put it down by the skate park, and we said no. And then they wanted to put it on the corner of Tenth and Wood, where the old playground was. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And we said no. <laughs> and they said, well, what do you got? Daryl and I drove around with, with the guy for I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, and. We have identified what appears to be an acceptable location back. Does everybody know what Morningside, where we have the salt storage? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back we, we're looking at uh, a, a 75 by 75 foot square back in that area for the location of the cell tower. You're still going to see it when you're driving down Wood Street and when you're yeah. driving around a little bit, but you're not going to be. It's not going to be in your face. It's going to be over there. 
Okay? Yep. What company is this? Good, uh, good location. location. This is Exonet. The we'll cell have a company is continuing AT story on that one. So let's move on to ordinances. <coughs> uh, first reading, bill number 1509 is an ordinance that has to do with uh, uh, an agreement with Holt City of Holt Summit and the City of Fulton or, or Animal Shelter <coughs> Services. Uh, Councilman Moore, would you please present uh, 1509 by title only? Bill number 1509, an ordinance authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri to execute an agreement with the city of Holt Summit, Missouri for an animal shelter service to sign all necessary documents in relation to said agreement. I move this for second reading at the next regularly scheduled council meeting. Second. Very good, thank you. I have a motion and a second to advance bill number 1509. Is there any discussion of this motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. The yeses have it. That bill advances. We'll now move to second reading ordinances, and we have an ordinance 1507, our proposed bill. Excuse me. Uh, we're with a uh, relinqu it's a relinquishing agreement uh, with MoDOT on a small strip of property along uh, US 54. Business US 54 North. Uh, Councilwoman Reclue, would you please present Bill number 1507? Yes, Second uh, reading, final yes. only. I'd like to also uh, do the third reading tonight. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> yes. Okay, Bill number 1507. An ordinance authorizes the mayor on behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri to sign all necessary documents in relation to the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission Road relinquishing agreement regarding the U.S. Business 54 Highway Improvement Project and establish an effective date. I make a motion to place Bill number 1507 for the third reading of tonight's meeting. Second. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to advance Bill number 1507 to third reading. Any further discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. Councilwoman Reclue, would you please present 1507 for third reading? Yes. Uh, bill number 1507. An ordinance authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri, to sign on necessary documents in relation to the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission road relinquishment agreement regarding the U.S. Business 54 Highway Improvement Project and establishing an effective date. I make a motion to pass bill number 1507 at the uh, final passage of this meeting. Second. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to advance 1507. Uh, is there any further discussion of the motion? Got it, don't Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. You've heard bill number 1507 presented three times. It's now time for final right. consideration. As the clerk reads the roll, would you please answer yes or no? Okay. Councilman Moore? Yes. Ms. Reclu? Yes. Mr. Schubertecker? Yes. Mr. Simmons? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. Shiland? Yes. Seven council members affirmative, one absent. Very good, thank you. Well, now consider. Mayor, I've got a question for Courtney. I saw that you uh, put a note in there while we were doing this. Can that be changed to a different color so we know that was a note right then? Or was another? I, I remember we did some circles with the color, but. I don't know if you're being serious right now or you're not. I'm serious. So. I can show you how to do that. If well, you're, you're wanting to Well, the I mean, color. as you as you typed it, it goes in there the same, just like it was already there. Oh, you so want I, something I, yeah, to make it. Is there something you can do? How about we get together after the meeting and we'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. We'll now move on to bill number 1508, which is an ordinance that has to do with the International Building Code and ex accepting uh, some provisions within it. Uh, Councilman Vaughn, would you please present 1508, title only, second reading. Bill 1508, an ordinance amending section 1833, amendments Fulton City Code by incorporating an additional exception to the 2015 International Building Code and establishing an effective date. I make a motion 
to place Bill 1508 for third reading at the next scheduled meeting. Second. Okay, very good. And I had a second. Very good. I have a motion and a second to advance Bill number 1508 to the next meeting. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion of that motion? Or question? Is there any Should possibility of doing third reading and final passage this evening? <clears throat> Not at this point. Unless you want to amend you the motion. You would need to, um, no. either that or we would have to is there a withdraw. Reason, is there a reason that needs to be done? Yeah. Just to go yeah. ahead and pass it. No. Uh, Very good. So, um, I got the answer is no on that one. Okay. okay. Do you have a comment? Yes, sir. Um, I think everybody knows my opinion on this. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to convince anybody else to change their opinion. But at the last council meeting, there was a comment that was brought up to uh, help sway people to approve this to where we haven't had any tornadoes like this. Um, in fact, Missouri has had six EF5 tornadoes. EF5 is anything over 200 miles an hour. Joplin's tornado was was a five, but their wind speed was estimated at 225 to 265, only because it knocked down all their Met towers. So we've had bad <laughs> tornadoes in Missouri. We probably will have bad ones again, but that's just. I hope we don't have one. So that's I'm done. I agree 100%. Thank you. Uh, very good. Any, that's the end of the discussion. I'll call for the question. <coughs> All those in favor of advancing bill number 1508, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed, no. 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 Two no's. Okay. And uh, so we have the rest of them that are five yeses. Okay. So that passes. It advances. Uh, for third reading, that's okay. council meeting. Okay. Announcements, uh, they're there. I'm going to let you all read them. Uh, we do have a need for an executive session this evening. And uh, with that. Really quickly, I just wanted to say, um, again, thank you to everyone. And thank you to Donna, even though she's, she's left already. Um, my certification is something I've, I've worked really hard on, and it's it's meant a lot to me, um, not only personally, but I think as a good reflection on the city of Fulton. So I appreciate all of the support and uh, her being here tonight. That was very special for me. So that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn to executive commission. Uh, yeah, good thing. <laughs> yeah. Second. Get out of here. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying yes. 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 yes.